In recent years, athletic participation in all demographics has more than doubled. Now this comes at the same time that we have, because of advances in cardiovascular care, more kids who have had uh, various types of heart disease who are living to be teenagers and adults. So we have more people with established heart disease who want to be more active and participate in sports. That is a recipe for the paper in Jack that's coming in the April 22nd issue. We're talking about a paper on sports and exercise cardiology in the United States, cardiovascular specialists as members of the athlete healthcare team. I gotta tell you, I have the first author of that paper and this is the ideal person to talk to. You are what, the, you, are, you are actually the one person in the United States who is a physician certified in cardiology and sports medicine and you're Christine Lawless, MD. I gotta ask, what a great combination. Where does that come from? Um, anybody who gets into this field of sports cardiology generally has an interest in athletics and my background was ice skating, figure skating. We don't have a lot of heart problems, but it, na it made me a natural to be interested in the effects of exercise on the heart. Wow. Now, Dr. Fred Bovet and I work together quite a bit because he's the editor-in-chief of Excel, and uh, he's also a sports medicine enthusiast. What's the role of the sports medicine uh, doctor and the cardiovascular specialist in terms of helping these teams? Sure. You know, in the past, we used to get consultations from them. In other words, the primary care and the orthopedic sports physicians would screen the athletes, get them ready to play. If they had a problem, like they blacked out, they'd send them to a cardiologist that was somewhere in some other building, and it took two weeks to see them. Now, with the emphasis on performance and not wanting any downtime and getting things done efficiently and allowing the athlete to play safely, the cardiologist has now come in earlier and we often, for instance, design screening programs or we overread the EKGs and echocardiograms that are being done. So basically, the cardiologist is being asked to get involved earlier in the whole scene. Now, the ACC is helping with that process. Oh yes, yes. Uh, three years ago, we petitioned to have the Sports and Exercise Cardiology Council and section. We started with about 115 members, <clears throat> and now we're up to 4,000 members after That's really an two, three years. Growth. Oh yes, <laughs> that that in indicates the the level of awareness and interest in the whole concept. Well, I remember reviewing the sports uh, participation guidelines around the world, and they were all over the map. I mean, at one point, uh, ours in the country was among the most restrictive in terms of if you have heart disease, we don't want you to do anything. Where should we be going with the, the guidelines in terms of helping doctors help their patients understand the risk, but also understand we know what they want to do. They want to get out there and participate. Yes. This is an excellent question and probably one of the major points we want to make today. We need data. So I would encourage anybody who's listening out there, if they are a researcher, to create data so that the guideline writers have something to put in the guidelines. For many years, we didn't really know the risk and we established the risk based on what we knew exercise did to the high risk conditions. So all we knew was exercise was bad for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Well, now we're thinking maybe there's some hypertrophic cardiomyopathies that are not so risky, but we need to generate the data because the whole thing with guidelines in sports medicine is about athlete safety. You don't want to put somebody out there at the expense of safety. But this is also why we have more cardiologists getting involved, because this population is growing and they have questions. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can, there, you can talk to any one of a number of your patients and they'll say, well, I've had three valve replacements and I, I want to do the marathon. What do I need to do? And it's not only the younger people, it's people who are 60 years old. Right. A uh, case I had, the gentleman said, I'm 60 years old. I had an acute infarction, an MI. Uh, about six weeks ago, and I've been through cardiac rehab, and I want to know if I can go back to open wheel race car driving. And so to answer his question, I had to know the demands of open wheel race car driving, because right. they're in, um, it's open wheel, so they dissipate heat, but you have to know that whole physiology. 
and how much oxygen consumption they require and what the demands on the heart are. What, what's the heart rate going to do? God bless an exercise physiologist in Indianapolis where the Indy 500 is. They actually studied all that. And so I had the information and could counsel the patient on what to do. Well, this is part of what you talk about in the paper for tailoring cardiovascular care to athletes and exercising individuals. Absolutely. We are in an era of personalized medicine. We're not one size fits all. You can't take a 60-year-old sedentary person and give them the same recommendation as someone who's doing marathons. Right. So what do you foresee in the, uh, in the next year or two? You've had tremendous growth. Are you still expecting to grow? Uh, what's going to happen in the next year or so? I anticipate some growth, but what I really see is that within the section, we're going to have people gathering together in task forces and work groups. For instance, people interested in coronary disease, would maybe they'll get a work group together and have a group of their patients followed for a number of years and then report back to the section and to the scientific meeting. I just see that we're going to be gathering more as a community and interacting more as a community. Well, I hope you can get some more data. I mean, if, if you can get these 4,000 members to organize around the idea of coming up with data, I think you will have accomplished. You've moved a mountain, I would imagine. Sometimes it felt like a mountain, too. <laughs> Because it's an educational process. You know, much yeah. like you're asking questions, every leading cardiologist was saying, well, what is this? You know, what, how is it different from what we did with Bethesda guidelines? And the big difference is we're athlete-centered, mm -hmm. not disease or technology-centered. In other words, a lot of the sessions here will be interventional cardiology, electrophysiology. We are athletic cardiology or sports cardiology. And it's about getting people back in the game safely, back to work safely. What if they're a construction worker that has to lift 150 pounds every day, or a UPS driver that's got to jump in and out of that truck and carry heavy boxes? Can they do that if they have a defibrillator? Can they do that if they've had a stent put in their heart and they have residual ischemia? So this is what we're all about, is what can the person do, not what can't they do, which is the old guidelines and restrictive. And this is all, a lot of this is in the April 22nd issue of Jack. Please look for the paper by Dr. Wallace for Cardio Source World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.